Picture this, it's a cozy evening in the 1950s, and you're sitting in your living room, bathed in the warm glow of the television screen. You tune in to watch a show that would become a beloved classic, a window into the idealized suburban life of the era. It's none other than Father Knows Best, a timeless TV series that whisked you away to a world of nostalgia, laughter, and life lessons. As the opening credits roll and the familiar faces of the Anderson family appear, you can't help but be transported back to your own first encounter with the show. Perhaps it was the witty banter between Jim and Margaret Anderson that first drew you in, or the endearing antics of their children, Betty, Bud, and Kathy. Maybe it was the way the show effortlessly captured the essence of a bygone era, where family values and life's simple pleasures took center stage. Do you remember the memorable moments that unfolded in the Anderson household? Those heartwarming conversations around the dinner table, the relatable dilemmas faced by each family member, and the unwavering wisdom of dear old dad. Father Knows Best had a way of making you feel like a part of the Anderson family, like you were right there in Springfield, USA, sharing in their joys and sorrows. Now, let's dive deeper into this beloved series and uncover some fascinating random facts that you might not know. From behind-the-scenes anecdotes to the show's impact on American culture, Father Knows Best holds a treasure trove of surprises waiting to be discovered. So, buckle up for a journey through time and television history, because you're about to learn some intriguing tidbits about a show that continues to warm hearts to this day. In 1954, the TV series Father Knows Best began its journey, but its roots traced back to 1949 when it started as a radio show. The show was brought to television by Eugene B. Rodney and starred Robert Young. It had a solid six-year run with original episodes airing on both NBC and CBS. Even after its initial run, CBS, and later ABC continued to air reruns of the show until as late as 1967. One interesting aspect of the series was its lineup of future TV dads. Actors like Herbert Anderson, Robert Reed, Dick York, and William Shallard appeared on the show. Notably, York and Shallard even shared the screen in one episode, making it a noteworthy gathering of TV dad talent. Behind the scenes, the Andersons' kitchen set had working appliances. These appliances weren't just for show, they were used to whip up coffee and pastries for the cast and crew when they arrived for their morning shifts. It added a touch of authenticity to the show's family dynamic. Father Knows Best remains a piece of television history, starting as a radio show, transitioning to TV, and featuring actors who would go on to become iconic TV dads. Its attention to detail, like the functioning kitchen set, added to its charm and believability. When the series debuted in 1954, it did so poorly in the ratings that CBS canceled it in March of 1955. A flood of protests came from viewers insisting that the show be reinstated. It was moved to an earlier time and gradually became a hit. This turnaround in its fortune demonstrated the strong connection the audience had with Father Knows Best. The show's cancellation and subsequent revival highlighted the power of viewer loyalty and their influence on television programming during that era. In the Father Knows Best reunion and Father Knows Best, Home for Christmas, one of Betty's young daughters, Ellen, was played by Kyle Richards of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. This interesting crossover between a classic TV series and a reality TV star adds a layer of pop culture significance to the show. It shows how the legacy of Father Knows Best continues to influence contemporary entertainment, bringing together fans from different generations. The show took place in the town of Springfield. Even though it was never specified in which state the town was located, several times characters mentioned Altoona, an actual city in Pennsylvania. Iowa also has a city called Altoona. This geographic ambiguity in the series adds a touch of mystery and universality to the setting. It allowed viewers from various regions to connect with the show, as they could imagine it taking place in their own hometowns. In summary, Father Knows Best initially struggled in the ratings, but was revived thanks to viewer protests, showcased a notable crossover with Kyle Richards, and kept its setting deliberately vague, making it relatable to a broad audience. These aspects contribute to the enduring appeal of the series. In 1954, the TV series Father Knows Best made its debut, featuring Jane Wyatt as Margaret Anderson, the mother of the Anderson family. But before Wyatt took on the role, Margaret was originally played by June Whitley Taylor on the radio version of the show. 
Later, Jean Vanderpil stepped in as the voice of Margaret on the radio. A Leonard Donahue portrayed Betty Anderson on the TV series, but her character was initially voiced by Rhoda Williams on the radio. As for Billy Gray's character, Bud Anderson, his voice was provided by Ted Donaldson in the radio version. Lauren Chapin, who played Kathy Anderson, had her character's voice portrayed by Norma Jean Nilsson on the radio. Notable radio cast members also included Alina Audley, Herb Vigrin, and Sam Edwards. In a fascinating turn of events, on November 22, 1963, as New Yorkers tuned in to watch a run of Father Knows Best, Man About Town on WABC-TV, breaking news of John F. Kennedy's assassination interrupted the broadcast. The unfolding news coverage took precedence over the show, highlighting the power of television as a medium for delivering critical news. Additionally, in 1959, the U.S. Treasury commissioned a unique episode of Father Knows Best titled 24 Hours in Tyrant Land. This episode was created to promote the sales of savings bonds. However, it was never aired as a regular episode but was distributed to schools, churches, and civic groups as a promotional tool. Interestingly, this episode can still be found as a bonus feature on the Season 1 DVD release of the series. These lesser-known aspects of Father Knows Best shed light on the show's radio origins, its role in delivering breaking news, and its unique episode created for a government initiative. Father Knows Best remains a significant part of television history. In the 1954 TV series Father Knows Best, there's an interesting tidbit about one of the main characters, Bud. His real name was James Anderson Jr. This fact adds a layer of authenticity to the show, as it connects the character to the actor behind the role. Another noteworthy detail from the series is that a Leonard Donahue, who played the character Betty Anderson, was pregnant with her first child throughout season three. Despite her pregnancy, she continued to work on the show up to six weeks before her due date. In the second to last episode of the season, viewers might notice that she was noticeably pregnant and had to be creative in hiding it. She wore a box coat, strategically stood behind objects, and was often filmed from her shoulders up to conceal her pregnancy, showcasing her dedication to the role. When Father Knows Best first aired in 1949 on NBC Radio, it was sponsored by Maxwell House and aired on Thursdays at 8.30 p.m. when the series transitioned from NBC Radio to CBS Television in October 1954. Robert Young was the only member of the radio cast to make the move to the TV sitcom adaptation. This change marked a significant shift for the show's format and audience. These intriguing details provide a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes happenings of Father Knows Best, adding depth to the beloved 1954 TV series. In the classic 1950s TV series Father Knows Best, a Leonard Donahue played the role of a 17-year-old girl named Betty Anderson. However, what's interesting is that at the time of portraying this teenage character, Donahue was already married and a mother in real life. This discrepancy between her on-screen and off-screen life highlights the contrast between the fictional world of television and the reality of the actors behind the characters. Furthermore, it's worth noting that several actors from Father Knows Best went on to have roles in another popular 1950s TV series, Dennis the Menace. Herbert Anderson, who played Jim Anderson in Father Knows Best, took on a supporting role in an episode of Father Knows Best, and later, he played the character of Henry Mitchell in Dennis the Menace. Similarly, Sylvia Field and Gloria Henry, who had supporting roles in Father Knows Best, also went on to become major cast members in Dennis the Menace. This transition between the two shows is a testament to the talent and versatility of these actors. However, it's important to acknowledge that Father Knows Best was a product of its time, and like many shows from that era, it had a limited representation of diversity. In over 200 episodes of the series, there is reportedly not a single black person seen. This absence of diversity in the cast reflects the racial dynamics of the 1950s television industry, which was largely dominated by white actors and characters. In conclusion, Father Knows Best was a notable TV series of the 1950s, with interesting behind-the-scenes facts such as a Leonard Donahue's age and marital status while playing a teenager, as well as the crossover of actors to Dennis the Menace. However, it's also important to recognize the lack of diversity in the show's cast, which is a reflection of the era in which it was produced.
Unresolved conflicts, tensions among Father Knows Best cast members in the world of 1950s television. Father Knows Best was a popular family sitcom that portrayed the idealized American family. However, behind the scenes, not everything was as harmonious as it seemed on screen. Tensions among the cast members simmered throughout the show's production, leaving some conflicts unresolved. One of the most notable instances of conflict involved the show's leading lady, Jane Wyatt, who played Margaret Anderson. Wyatt, a respected actress of her time, had a different approach to acting compared to her co-star Robert Young, who played Jim Anderson. Wyatt preferred a more methodical approach to her craft, while Young was known for his easygoing style. Their differing acting methods created friction on set, which occasionally spilled over into their on-screen chemistry. Another source of tension stemmed from a Leonard Donahue, who portrayed Betty Anderson. Donahue was one of the youngest cast members and had a spirited, youthful energy that clashed with Lauren Chapin, who played Kathy Anderson. Chapin, dealing with personal struggles at the time, often found herself at odds with Donahue. Their disagreements sometimes affected the dynamic of the show, as they played sisters who were supposed to get along. Despite attempts to maintain professionalism, these unresolved conflicts occasionally led to strained performances and moments of discomfort during the show's run. However, it's a testament to the actor's dedication that they managed to keep these tensions largely hidden from the public eye. In the end, Father Knows Best remains a beloved classic of American television, but it's essential to remember that even in the seemingly idyllic world of 1950s television, there were real-life struggles and tensions among the cast members that added depth to their performances. These unresolved conflicts serve as a reminder that behind the curtain, the reality of Hollywood can be quite different from the picture-perfect image it often portrays. As we draw the curtains on our journey through the timeless classic that is the 1954 TV series, Father Knows Best, I invite you to take a moment to reflect on the precious memories and cherished moments this show may have stirred within you. Father Knows Best was more than just a television series. It was a window into the values, struggles, and triumphs of a bygone era. The Anderson family, led by the wise and caring Jim, offered us a glimpse into the complexities of family life, the enduring love between parents and children, and the humor that often accompanies our daily trials. Perhaps you found solace in the warm embrace of the Andersons, or maybe you related to the challenges they faced as a family. Did you ever wish your own family could be as understanding? and supportive as theirs. Or maybe you chuckled at the amusing predicaments they found themselves in, seeing a reflection of your own life in their comical moments. Now is your chance to share your thoughts, your fondest memories, or even the life lessons you took away from this iconic series. Whether it's a heartfelt connection or a laugh out loud moment, we'd love to hear from you. Your voice adds to the rich tapestry of Father Knows Best enthusiasts. And together, we can continue to celebrate the enduring legacy of this remarkable show. Thank you for joining us on this nostalgic journey and for sharing your own stories and sentiments. Your presence makes it all the more special. Until next time, keep those memories close to your heart. And remember, the wisdom of Father Knows Best lives on in us all. Warm regards.